for every debit entry there must be a corresponding credit entry now this means that if um, a company continues to do double entry for the whole year at the end of the year the total number of debits should be equal to the total number of credits but how do we make sure that the total number of debits is the same as the total number of credits we are able to ensure that these two are the same by using by preparing something we call a trial balance what is a trial balance a trial balance is a list of all the ledger accounts contained in the ledger of a business this list definitely contains the name of each nominal ledger account and the value of that nominal ledger balance. If you have to take a look at your screen and you look at that account, this is a data we've called event. If you look at this ledger account, we are seeing that on the debit side it has those values, on the credit side it has those values. And so the total number of, you definitely from looking at this, you can see that the debit side is bigger than the credit side. It is 482,000 and so because it's the 482,000 and balancing of this account means that the balance carried down is 324,000 which we put on the credit side then the balance brought forward or the balance brought down is 324,000 this is the balance brought down so when you look at that account we say it has a debit balance why does it have a debit balance? Because the debit side is bigger than the credit side. So the debit side is bigger than the credit side by 324,000. So because this ledger account, which we've called data event, which is an asset, is having a debit balance, when we are preparing a trial balance, we will go ahead and post that balance in the trial balance. So that is how our trial balance will look like. In the column for item, we shall put the nominal ledger names. Which in the column for item, we shall put the names of the ledger accounts. In this case, we are putting their data event. So we said it has a de debit balance because the debit side is bigger than the credit side. And so that's why we put that balance right there as 324,000. Let's look at the case if it was a credit balance. We have the creditor annulled account. A creditor is a liability account, and it definitely, in more, all liability accounts, have credit balances. Even from here, what you can see, we see that the credit side is bigger than the debit side. And if we are to balance this off, you realize that the balance carried down is 314, and the balance brought down is also 314. This is a credit balance, or in other words, it shows that the credit side of this account is bigger than the debit side by 314,000. That's why we say this has a credit balance. And, and uh, because it, it has a credit balance of 314, this is how we post it in the trial balance. We shall go ahead and write the name of the account. In this case, we said it's credit annulled account. And then we shall go ahead and write the credit balance in its column like that so I've just used the two examples for just how we post to the trial balance when it is a debit balance and when it is a credit balance of course these two accounts are just arbitrary examples but it's a whole list of different accounts that we post right there and eventually we go ahead and add up the totals so if uh, giving you the overall picture, that is how a trial balance will look like. We will have the debit side. All uh, accounts that have the debit balance will have their balances written in that column. Then we have the credit side. All accounts that have the credit balances will be written. Their balances will be written in that column. And of course, the items will be written in that column right there, as you're seeing on your screen. Of course, the general rules when we are writing a trial balance here is that all asset accounts are will have debit balances all liability accounts will have credit balances all equity accounts will have credit balances all income accounts will have credit ac balances and all expense accounts will have debit balances and as we're preparing the trial balance in that kind of format we definitely when we go ahead and add the, the total debits and the total credits those two figures are expected to be the same. 
when those two figures are the same, it, it shows that the double entry has been done very well. Now, a trial balance is not a financial statement. A trial balance is just prepared to check the arithmetic accuracy of the double entry system of accounting. Now, that takes me to discussing some of the purposes of the trial balance. Of course, one of them is uh, what I've just mentioned, that it provides evidence of the arithmetic accuracy of the books of accounts. When we say evidence of arithmetic accuracy, we, we are meaning to say that it helps to prove that the double entry has been done correctly. It also acts as a basis for preparing financial statements because once the, tri the, tri the balances have been extracted from the ledger accounts, we extract those balances to go ahead and prepare the, the financial statements. The financial statements here, we are talking about the balance sheet or call it the statement of financial position. We have the trading profit and loss account or call it the statement of comprehensive income. We are going to do those later on in the series. Then we have another financial statement called the statement in changes of owner's equity. And we also have another financial statement that we call the statement of cash flows. All these statements are prepared using information from the trial balance. Then also we, a trial balance may assist in the identification and correction of errors. And uh, identification and correction of errors here we mean that sometimes we may list down all the debits and all the credits and upon adding them we might find that they are not exactly the same. When the debits and the credits are not the same it means that there was an error when they were posting the debits and the credits during the double entry system. The moment we detect that the debits and the credits are not the same, this helps us to go ahead and investigate why they are not the same. And in so doing, we are able to uncover errors. And definitely being able to uncover and correct some of these errors is only possible because of this trial balance. Now, there is a whole topic on errors. We shall be able to look further into how the trial balance helps us to identify these errors when we do that topic it will be a session later on in this series in our upcoming session we shall be doing a worked example where we shall be looking at some transactions and we shall go ahead and perform some double entry on those transactions and thereafter we'll go ahead and prepare a trial balance like this video if you like it be sure to subscribe if you've not yet subscribed Check out other accounting lectures on the channel. My name is Aaron Gwanga Kuramia and this is Kisembo Academy.